One of the joys of really great team working is the capacity that your team has for creative and innovative problem solving. So part of your job as leader is to get the best out of them in terms of this creative thinking by getting them together in an informal and mentally stimulating environment and facilitating a problem solving discussion. That's what we'll look at in this video. If you want really great creative thinking, then it often helps to create something of a playful environment and certainly one that is informal in tone. Surrounding people with posters, with flip charts, whiteboards, colored pens, sticky notes, and even toys to play with can really boost people's sense of creativity and innovation. But to get the best out of your team, you also need to facilitate a conversation which is both structured, but allows everybody to contribute. Indeed, it ensures that everybody does contribute because the people who have the ideas are not necessarily the most gregarious ones and the most willing to share. Sometimes that shy person is sitting on a brilliant idea, but hasn't got the confidence to say it. And it's therefore your role as facilitator to bring that out of them, to make it easy for them to share their idea. What this means is that you need to have a, an arsenal of techniques for encouraging people to contribute. Things like small group conversations, independent thinking as part of the process, and writing down ideas and making them visible for people to examine and share and discuss. I have a whole course on problem solving lined up, but in the meantime, if you're watching this before I produce that course, do take a look at the video in our meetings course on four special types of meeting. The third of these meetings is creative thinking meetings, and I will tell you in that how to facilitate those meetings. But for now, I want to focus on some tips and some advice. Firstly, and my best advice is always to reframe the problem from our problem is this to what we want to do is find out how to do that. Reframe it from a problem to the solution and then look for ways to make that solution real. Then use a meeting structure that achieves eight things. And first and most important of those is to define the problem. Often the process of defining the problem makes it clear what you need to achieve, the how to, and starts to get people's thinking going about what the solutions are going to be. Second, you need to outline the context within which the problem sits. Make sure that people understand the parameters and the constraints uh, under which they need to operate, but also what the freedoms are. Third, your meeting needs to explore all of the relevant knowledge, information, data. Draw in all of that and discuss it before you start articulating possible solutions. It's at step four that we get the widest possible range of options on the table, encourage everybody to put their ideas down. And whilst brainstorming isn't often the best way to do it, if it's the only way you know, then use it. Next, you need to put all of those ideas to the test and test them hard and rigorously. Have people challenge those ideas, possibly even appoint a red team, a half of the team, to challenge the ideas of the other half and vice versa. Another approach is to have a devil's advocate ask one person to try to pick holes in every single idea. Or another approach is to get the whole group to take each idea and to find as many things wrong with it or as many risks or challenges to it. When you've exposed the weaknesses of the idea, next thing you need to do is to look for variations on those ideas that address the weaknesses. And one way systematically to vary the ideas is to try combining different ideas so that two different ideas together resolve the whole problem and cancel out each other's shortcomings. Only then do we ask the team to determine the optimal problem resolution. 
What is the solution or the combination of ideas that form the solution? And finally, at number eight, we need to produce a plan. We know what the solution is. How are we going to implement it? For me, there are few things in the world of work that are more fun than getting a small team together to work on a problem. And if you know the basic problem solving approach and you go through those eight steps with your team, and you do so in a way that encourages everyone to communicate using a range of different techniques, then you will find a great resolution to any problem that faces you. Please do give us a thumbs up if you like this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come, so please do subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of it. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video, and in the meantime, Keep learning.